welcome to Polygon Division. This is a CRT fantasy user interface, also known as FUI Edition Mega Pack Bundle. This tutorial builds off the retro screen effect in my previous video. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and check it out because that texture we created is our foundation for what I'm about to show you. Also, there's a link in the description to download the Mega Pack of textures that we'll be using. So pause the video now and go ahead and download it. CRT Fantasy User Interface Edition Mega Pack. With that being said, let's get creating. Here's the downloaded Mega Pack Bundle zip file, uncompressed. There's 18 PSDs in here and one document that has the previews for you to review so you don't have to go picking and choosing and guessing. Makes things a heck of a lot easier. It's gonna be a lot simpler than my previous tutorials. It will only take a few minutes, so let's see how this works. So looking at this screen I just took from Behance of a fantasy user interface, also known as FUI, you can see a couple things. There's a nice reflection happening. We've got the texture that I'm gonna be showing you how to do, and then we have this element elevated layering system that happens where it fades up. So I'll show you how to do that to add dimension and depth to your flat images of your interfaces. So let's see how this works. So I'm in a blank project here and we've got a plane here and I set it to 1920 by 1080. And so if I need it smaller, you scale it down in the same ratio so that your images are not skewed. I'm going to apply the texture that we created in the last video and apply it and let's look at it. So the problem that happens when we stack these on top of each other, to create that sandwiching depth, you won't have transparency. So let's take a look at that and see how that works. So if I take this object and duplicate it and set it to like 25 and do another one above it, set it to like 50, we'll have three sandwiches happening and they won't show through because there's no transparency. So we want to blend. We want to see the alpha come through to show the sandwich of layers. So in order to do that, if I just hit render here, load up the IPR, you can see that we cannot see through the interface right now. It's it's got black pixels, so it's obstructing the layers below it. So this is an easy fix. So here's the texture that we created last video. And what we want to do is want to pull off of this color layer and make some alpha. So if I double click and I bring up a ramp, what this ramp is going to do is it's going to convert into black and white pixels. So I'll take this and drag it into the alt input and then we're going to drag the opacity in. And if opacity is not visible, I'll show you it's this one above the bump. So we're loading it up into this opacity. The ramp is converting it to grayscale. And then what we need to do is we need to see what's happening with the alpha first before we make an adjustment. So I'll just move this over and you can see we have transparency. We have three layers happening, but the alpha is messed up. So if I take and drag this slider, it brings up the opacity and we're basically crunching contrast of it so that the things that were moderately light become solid and the areas that are black get knocked out. So there we go. That is how to create that 3D depth. Now, what I want to do is I want to have these subsequent layers fade out. And you might be tempted to make another texture and just knock the opacity down, but I would rather just have one texture doing all the work and we use under the render section, I'll bring it out in the render. So if I right click on the layer and go to render tags, you get this menu here. And what we do is we're going to click the display. So I'll add the display to the other ones as well. And then with the display, you have visibility. And so I'm going to just set the first, this first one here to something like 25%. And the next one I'll set to something lower, like 12. And you can see it's starting to fade out. And you can do as many layers as you want. This is up to you and the spacing, you can come up with your own spacing. But I've found the best look is set to five or two and a half and do increments of like 50%. Set the top one to five and I'll do the next one 10% so that it kind of ghosts it. So let's see what we got. And you can see we now have this really cool 3D effect happening. And that is, I want a cool like reflective material at the bottom. So next what we're going to do is we're going to create a new shader and drag it onto the reflection shape. And what we need to do is we need to make this shader completely black and you can see the reflection happening. I can bring it up and down to get the right amount of blur. But you notice if I go kind of large with it, like 0.3, let's do 0.35, our reflection's almost gone. So what we can do is we can slam this IOR until we get a result that we like. I'm going to try four and five. I like that. That looks good. So I set it to five and that just basically boosts the reflection amount because the weight cannot go up higher than one. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the samples down to eight to kind of speed up the render time. And you could apply a, a bump map to this to like give it some texture or whatnot and play around with the height. So you might want it nice and close to your layer like that. That's an option, but play around with it 
it, but what this is going to do is it's going to give you a nice depth to your screen renders. So this was like a fantasy user interface, Nef UI project, and the camera moves, you get that nice depth on your screen. So it feels three dimensional. So just to reiterate, all we did to this texture is add a ramp on the last node before the color output. So where this gets blended, there's our texture patterns come from. You pull out the, if I solo this, you can see there's just the solo of the color channel. It's kind of dark. So what we're doing is the darker colors get boosted in the ramp and then it gets converted to black and white. And then we have to move these values to get the right amount of alpha. You will lose a little bit of detail in terms of those really soft lit textures might disappear. So you're going to have to play with these values. The next thing I want to show you is how to quickly change these textures because there's three of them for the pattern. So I'm going to pick another one. I'll do number eight. Let's do the diagonals or let's do the sine wave. And then what you do is you got to move this into your textures folder for this to work. So you get a relative link. You can see there's no forward slashes or folder structures in here. That's because this where I save this, there's a texture folder. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, hit enter. So it updates and then paste again and enter. And now if I zoom in here, you can see we have a wavy pattern. Pattern. And then what we can do is we can come into our pixel size and change this down to something smaller. And now you have this really cool pattern. It doesn't look like waves from far away. Obviously, if you're going to be this close, I would pick a different pattern. But from further away, it adds a cool like LCD screen effect, kind of softens things up too. So what did I include in this mega pack bundle? Well, here's the textures. You can see I created a PDF that has all the textures. There's 18 of them. And I put version one because I'll probably make more of these is at a later date and kind of experiment around with different patterns. But the one that we built out in the last video was the first one here called CRT Pixel. Then I was looking at CRTs and how like up close detail shots. And they're actually this kind of oblong shape, egg shape with these little grills that you can barely make out. So that's what this one is. This is mimicking like a real CRT monitor. Here's a blurred version of this one. And then I experimented with like adding edges and this gives you a really cool result. This one also adds nice texture with the line coming down the middle and the bars. Now, if you set these to really small pixel sizes, you're not going to see that much from it. Um, and then these are like data chips. These also look cool. I did a small version. This is 100 pixels. All these are 200. And this one gives you a finer grain detail to your texture. More chips. This one looks really, really cool. It creates like boxes within boxes. Then I did some diagonals. And the difference between these is obviously the diagonal lines get thicker and thicker. And what actually happens optically is that your image gets brighter because there's less black pixels. These ones here tend to be the brightest. Then I did the wavy lines. And then this one's interesting because of the shape of the diamonds, there's more green diamonds. So I darkened the green to counter the brightness value that's contributed to the green. So try that one out too. Too. Gives you an interesting result. So that's CRT Mega Pack Bundle Reference Guide. I highly suggest you go through the Mega Pack and try experimenting out with the different textures. They're subtle, will provide lots of textures to your flat renders. Thanks so much. If you like my tutorials, make sure you like, comment, subscribe for more. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.